Let's build a Maven project utilizing GitHub Actions. So first I wanna explain what GitHub Actions actually are. They're basically a continuous integration, continuous deployment platform that is offered by GitHub. And this is just a fancy way of saying they can do things when certain things happen. So basically we can trigger things like a build whenever there is a new push to this repository, or maybe when somebody adds to a release branch, those types of things can trigger a certain action that then GitHub can run and you get an output out of it. So I have this Maven project and to get to the actions, we just click on the actions button here here at the top. If you don't have any actions set up for this repository, you'll get this screen. Basically, it's giving you some suggestions based off of some static analysis that GitHub did on your repository, and you can choose from these. And actually, these could be perfectly fine. For many use cases, if all you wanna do is basically build with Maven, or maybe you want to publish a Java package to the Maven repository, you can do these things just off of the built-in actions that it gives to you. The thing is, people are doing this stuff all the time. So obviously they make standard actions that you can use and just run with. But instead of choosing one of these, which you can definitely do, I'm gonna actually go through and create one myself so that we can see line by line what's happening. To do that, I'll go to this button, which is set up a workflow yourself. From here, it opens up an editor window where we actually write our YAML file. YAML is just the configuration file that the GitHub Actions uses. Over here on the right, you can see a market place and these can be some actions that you might want to add to your file here. Things like caching, set up node.js environment. Some of these aren't particularly useful for us because we're using Java. We're not setting up a Node.js environment, but we could download and build an artifact or something like that. The second tab is the documentation tab, and this gives you some basic documentation on how you can configure and set up your YAML file to run your action. And of course, up here, you can also cancel the changes that you might be making, or you could commit the changes if you are satisfied with your YAML file. So now let's get into writing the configuration. So the first line here is the name and that's the name of the action that you're gonna be running. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. You'll see the red squiggly line here, and this is just indicating that we kind of haven't finished the, the file yet, so it's just waiting for us to actually add something to this file other than just the name. The next line saying on is actually our trigger. This will be what causes the action to actually run, and it's saying trigger on pretty much anything. We could trigger on a push, we could trigger on a pull request, we could trigger on adding labels to uh, the repository or maybe a documentation update, or even if an issue was added to the repository. GitHub gives you a ton of different triggers that you can run your action on. And the idea here with these actions is that you'll have a trigger that triggers some job or multiple jobs, and those will have steps involved with them. And in those steps, you'll do certain things like setup, or you could have some output, and from that output, do something with it. So like publish to a server. But for this trigger step, we're gonna say on, and then my trigger is saying on any push, now you can filter these pushes. You could say like only trigger when the main branch gets pushed. And then you can have even more triggers saying like, hey, is this a Java file? If so, then we'll run this build. If it's something like a text file, then we don't wanna run it because that might be some documentation or something that just doesn't matter to actually build the application again. So what's nice is we can mix and match these different filters to produce the certain trigger that we want to actually see for this particular action. For right now, since this is just a basic example, I'm just going to do on any push trigger this action. The next line is jobs, and these will be any number of different tasks that we want this action to do. So we can have multiple jobs underneath this configuration and do different things that we might want it to do. Basically, we could have a build step, and then we might have a publish step, and those would be two different jobs that we have running for this action. Now, just so you're aware, jobs can run concurrently. So all of the list of jobs that you have underneath this will be ran at the same time. If you want something to be ran sequentially, you'll have to make multiple steps inside of one of the particular jobs that you want to have sequential. So our first job is gonna be named build. At this tab level underneath jobs will be the name of whatever job you're running. So I'm gonna call this the build job, which will build the Maven project. The next line is runs on, and this will be the runner that we're actually building the project in. For me, I'm picking Ubuntu latest, and this is a virtual machine that GitHub provides to you that you 
can use publicly. If we look here, these are the list of public VMs that are usable for GitHub Actions and their provisions. You can see that we have a Linux machine with Ubuntu, we have Windows machines, we have Mac machines, and you can use any of these runners that you want in a public repository. You can also use these runners in a private repository. The only caveat there is that you're only allotted 2000 minutes of build time. So basically when your build is running or when your action is running, you get charged for how many minutes that it's running for. Thankfully, they give 2000 minutes for free and anything above that incurs some cost, but that's only for private repositories. For public repositories, you're left with the public runners. When an action gets triggered or ran, it gets put into a queue. And the reason for that is they have a limited pool of virtual machines that they can allot to different actions. And the entire public repository database is utilizing those virtual machines. So your action just sits there and waits until a virtual machine is available to you, and then it runs whatever it needs to run. For our case, we'll be running the build. That's how they keep it free for the public repositories and for the private repositories, it just is a limitation. Now, another option for you is to have a self-hosted runner. That's where you create your own virtual machine somewhere else, wherever you want it to be, and you actually hook up a runner to GitHub Actions. That way you get around all of these hurdles or blocks or queuing or whatever. Instead, it will immediately send the action to the virtual machine that you have self-hosted. Of course, you do have to eat the cost of running that virtual machine, but it might wash out in terms of how many minutes you use versus how much it costs to run that virtual machine. For our project, we're running a public repository, so we don't have to worry about anything. And we're gonna just run one of the regular Ubuntu latest runners provided by GitHub. Next are the steps, and these will be in order what the job is actually doing. The next line is the uses line. And this is something really nice about GitHub Actions is that there are already actions created that we can just tie into. For this one, we're actually taking the checkout action that is provided by GitHub and using it to check out the repository. So we don't have to write out any scripts or fancy code to do the checkout of our repository onto this Ubuntu runner. We can just have this standard action of checkout do it for us. Now the next couple lines is another step. And you'll notice that there are dashes in front of each one of these, and these indicate a step. So these will be ran in sequential order. The first one being this uses step where we did that checkout. The next step being this setup JDK 17. Now I could have had this dash and then name and then say checkout above this uses step, but I don't necessarily need to because this checkout actually has its own steps involved inside of its action. For this next step, I wanted to delineate between the checkout and the actual setup of Java. So I created a name for this step. Again, we're using uses for this particular step and we're using the action set up Java. This is gonna set up Java automatically for us, which is super nice. The next line here is with, and these are configuration options that we have for this action. Each general action, like the checkout action or the setup Java action might have some properties that we can set so that we have the setup that we want. The next three lines are the properties that we want to use for the setup. Setup Java allows us to set up a Java version, which we set to 17, a distribution, which we set to the Zulu JDK. And then I set this cache to Maven. This will be so that we can cache the dependencies and every time we run this, we don't have to download all of the dependencies again. We just pull from the cache. So now that we're done with the setup Java task, we can move on to actually building the application. Here, I've done another step and it's called build application. And then I run a command. Here, I'm running Maven package and then pointing it towards the pom.xml that's at the root of the repository. So you could leave the build at that and just have the build and nothing else. But something that's really nice about GitHub is that you could create a dependency graph and see all of the dependencies for your application. With this graph, you can also enable something called Dependabot, which allows you to do upgrades of versions automatically. Basically, Dependabot will be searching your dependency graph, see that there might be a, a new version of a dependency, and then submit a pull request that you could then approve and merge into your code base. This is nice because you get automatic dependency version upgrades and you don't really have to think about it. So that's what I've added for these next two lines in this next Next step. I'm just updating the dependency graph utilizing an action that's already available to us. It's called Maven.
in dependency submission action. So now that we're done writing this action, we can go ahead and commit this code. I'm gonna go up here in the upper right and hit commit changes. From here, we get a generated message and I'll just leave it at that. And I'll make sure that I'm committing directly to the main branch. Now you can see that the commit went through and I have this new .github folder. And inside this folder are my workflows. And in the workflows, I have the main.yaml. So now we can be in actions and see the action in progress. If I click on my action, you'll see that I actually ran into an error. If we click on the build, it will take us directly to the error so that we can see what may have went wrong. You can see here that it's saying HTTP error, resource not accessible by integration. And up here it's saying that I'm getting a 403 when I'm trying to post to this API URL. Now this is probably because I didn't give the action the right permissions inside of the Ubuntu runner. So let's go ahead and fix this. I'm going to go to the workflow file and then I'm going to hit edit. Now that we're back in the edit screen, I'm going to add the permission to Ubuntu to allow us to write to the repository. So I've added these couple lines that add the permissions to this job to allow it to write to our repository. So let's go ahead and commit the changes again. And from here, just let it auto-generate and hit commit changes. Now, if we go back to actions, we can see that our action is queued and waiting for a VM to be available to run. And now that we're in the action, we can see that the build successfully ran. If we click on it, we can see all of the steps that we made as well as the ones that were ran from the standard actions that we used. And we can go at a granular level to see everything that's happening inside of the step. So you can see in our build application step that we're running Maven package, and this is the command that we decided upon. It downloads every dependency that we need, and then it actually builds and packages the jar. We also ran the update dependency graph, and this is what failed earlier. While you won't see much in the log here, what we can do is go back up to the top and then go to insights. From here, if we click on dependency graph on the left, we can actually see all of the dependencies that are used in our application, which for this particular example application, it's not much. What's nice is you can also see all of the projects that depend on our application or library, or you could click on Dependabot and enable it to upgrade your versions automatically. This is a really nice starter for your CI CD platform. In fact, you get way more functionality than what I've shown here. Like you could do things like adding labels or tags to issues when they come in. If an issue was labeled a bug or maybe it's labeled a feature request or something like that, you could do that automatically with an action. These actions are really powerful and hopefully this video gave you a little bit of an insight on what you can actually do with them. So with that, that is how you build a Maven project utilizing GitHub actions.